Hello, today is January 5th, 2014, we are doing next session and today's session is a little unusual, it will be about Reiki healing and energy healing. But first uh, I have to do our usual introduction, which will be also a little unusual. We have mostly our most of our visitors on YouTube are new people, they never saw us, so I have to explain what we do and uh, who comes to us. So that's all about channeling and uh, we are in communication with friendly extraterrestrials, friendly aliens. Uh, the alliance is called Gurkfitnir. Uh, these are Pleiadians from Erra. Uh, mm, gray, Yael Gray. Uh, they don't tell their planet. Uh, Arcturians and, and Lyrons. And they are helping us in many ways, helping the Earth Project. They are preparing for open contact and now the turn is for humans to invite them. They don't want to come without invitation. Uh, and we started the channeling, um, Jim started the channeling to me about half a year ago. And it started during the Reiki session. And this is the first time we'll show that Reiki session. So Reiki is an energy healing art. Um, it uses uh, hands, palms of hands, to send healing energy. You know, Jesus Christ did healing by laying on of hands on people. And he taught his students to, 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 to do Reiki. Like one of the methods was just to put the Reiki on the back of the person, right here. Just stand behind, put the hands on the back of the person. And that's all. You breathe and you invite healing energy to your heart. You fill your heart with glowing healing energy. And then it goes by itself. Is It is invited to go into a person and heal whatever is needed in person. So Reiki is one of the purest, in a way, healing arts because you don't do anything other placing the hands and inviting the energy. Everything else is done through, through energy, which is not physical. It is supernatural. When uh, I say, uh, send energy from one hand to another, from right to left, I, I feel that energy. I feel it like a little blow on the hand. When I move it, it's like a ray, like a sprinkle. It goes, shh. so if you do that, just blow on your head, on your hand, and you feel how it moves. So it's like a little blow on my, on my hand. That's how I feel Reiki energy. So Reiki is very healing. It allows to stabilize your stabilize your vortices. We are all filled with energy. Energy flows through us, and and there are vortices called chakras. Chakras. There are seven chakras, and they have to spin well. Energy has to go go uh, properly through the pathways from above to the ground. And when you're sick, the energy in Reiki mm, teaching, the, in the Reiki art, it's, it's called blockage. So if energy is blocked, then some organs or some place becomes sick. It kind of the energy go doesn't flow through that. So you use your hand, the healer uses the hands to send energy to clear. So it's, it's like washing your paths for of energy. So that's what, what we do. We place the hands and and because there were holidays and also it was a lot of snow, so a lot of Reiki sessions which we had, like Reiki share sessions, I couldn't attend, they were cancelled. So I didn't have Reiki for a while, so I need that too. So I will have the Reiki session. So what happened um, uh, during the Reiki session half a year ago, uh, I knew already that aliens are around me and they wanted to communicate with me. And when they came through gym, they started speaking, I wasn't surprised. And first thing I said, take me up there and I will visit you and we'll talk. And we'll help you and we'll help, you will help us. And then I developed that idea writing books and letters to them electronically and publishing them and sending them to them and sending them to Jim and Jim sent it to them mentally saying, let's create a colony up there. It will take us and we will explain to you how we live here and we'll do contact up there and then we'll broadcast what we learned to the humanity. We have to create a new alien aware human culture and that will transform the humanity to the better. 
and all the secrets, all the evil plans will be exposed because it's all transparent from up there. They all can see that. So that was the plan to save the humanity. And the plan was implemented in May last year. They started taking people. Not me, unfortunately, but they took others. And today, the, uh, uh, now, by now, there was about 200 people who were taken there, voluntary, all volunteers, and returned back. Normally, they don't take people more than four or two weeks in a time. So you are absent from here only for five minutes, but then you go there and you see, and they stretch this five minutes to two weeks and you return and they allow people to remember what happened there. Uh, they visit their alien ships, sometimes they visit other planets, they have tours to other planets. Um, there are four colonies right now, or even five, I'm not sure. Four colonies and um, they're doing good. They visit they meet with aliens every day, they live in nice quarters designed for humans and these quarters are, are comfortable, they have alien technologies, so they have replicators and things of that sort, they have communicators, they have holographic projections and the biggest achievement of the colonies is that they developed telepathy, so they invite telepaths to come there, practice their telepathy, they do telepathy, they do uh, group sessions and they meditate and the aliens talk to them telepathically and they talk also through sound vocally but they also learn to talk telepathically and when you go from vocal communication to telepathic communication it's like going from tiny modem or typing to a broadband where you can send tons of information. So. Uh, deception is much more difficult, so it's almost impossible when you're a telepath. So telepathic societies are much more open, people are much more open to each other. Deception is not possible. Confusion is possible, but not deception. So most of the civilizations start as we do, and then they become telepathic, and they evolve to, from third dimension to the fourth dimension. And the aliens we are talking to are from fourth dimension. Uh, we also are talking to an angel, which was excellent. Recently we spoke to a fairy. We are speaking to an ancient god once in a while. His name is El, E L, and uh, he brought us unfortunate news that according to his plan, and he is not only a god, it's, it's more like a group consciousness, part of the bigger god, the creator, part of the, of the all that is of the bigger god. So he brought us the news that his plan is to transform the earth through a crisis. And he is set to set us to create, to develop a crisis through our hands, not his hands, through our hands by 2027, 13 years from now. So, uh, and according to his calculations or their calculations, um, half of the humanity will perish in about five months from local violence. So people, uh, so the whole system will fall apart, all the economy will fall apart and people will just, especially in the cities, will start fighting each other just because it's our nature and a lot of people will uh, unfortunately die. In 2027, during, according to their predictions, so obviously we don't want that to happen and um, we're looking for ways to avoid that and that's a big part of our discussion. How do we reduce the casualties and do we really need that sort of, it's all, almost like a revolution, do we really need a revolution? Can we evolve by in 13 years to prevent that disaster? And the main reason for that is just to get rid of our financial system and to recreate uh, more transparent society. So is the humanity that that uh, flawed, is there a flaw in our design? So these telepathic experiments in the colonies show that we have a hope, we can become telepaths. Our children are especially talented to become telepaths and empaths, feel the energy, feel the sen feel what happens. Like during the holidays I was trying to work and I felt this holiday spirit even if I was alone, there was no communication with the outside world, I felt that I can't do much work because everybody is celebrating. 
I still did the, the work, but I thought that I'm connected to everybody around, so, you know, their madness or their joy is overwhelming and it, I can't concentrate on what I would normally do. So, if in 2027 the world becomes crazy and people start killing each other, it wouldn't be possible to isolate yourself. Even if you go away from the cities, as they recommend, and hide in the, you know, somewhere in the wilderness, you will still be affected by this global consciousness. So that is my question for today. How do we help the humanity? I guess we all connected. How do we evolve together to prevent that disaster? Obviously, uh, a lot of other sources say that the, the Earth is overpopulated, which I don't believe, but they say that. So maybe we need to lose that num number of people, but can we lose that number of people somehow else, like by traveling to other planets or by just reducing our... Um, voluntarily reducing the number of, uh, how do you say, children, right? I mean, ju ju just kind of birth control, but through birth, that, that, that you call it birth control. Can, can we do something more, less radical, less suffering, less violence, and just do it in a more uh, enlightened fashion other than violence? All right, um, so today I, I will lay down, Jim will do Reiki, and, uh, he learned this alien Reiki, which is a little different than uh, human Reiki. In human Reiki, you use palms and you put the hands like that. In alien Reiki, you put fingers and send energy through fingers. And we know that Lirans do that and Yael Grays do, do, do that sort of Reiki. It's a surprise, they also have sort of a Reiki healing technique. So you will see that. And Jim and I create sort of an antenna which helps the channeling. I, I, I obviously I'm asking questions. I'm a researcher, so I I have a very big desire to find the truth and to help the humanity. And James Boros, how do you say it? Allows himself, lends yeah the word is lends himself to to channeling and allows other spirits to come into his body and work through his hands. So that's what happens, and it works great. Um, who do we invite? We invite, obviously, uh, Jesus Christ seemed to be said that he would come in the new year. New year started. Happy new year. So we hope he will come. He is obviously is one of the most welcome guests. I would love to talk to him. We have tons of questions. Obviously, it's really hard to ask questions to Jesus Christ, but but we'll, we'll be happy to hear what he say. And our questions are obvious. How do we prevent big disasters? How do you how we evolve to next um, dimension, how we ascend, all, all of that. Uh, and love is his specialty, so, you know, what is wrong with our love, or what is wrong with our religion, how we fix it. Um, all higher end consciousness, the God, the gods are welcome. Our old friends, uh, alien friends, are all are welcome. Our new alien friends, whoever wants to come, only positive ones, the ones wouldn't, which wouldn't hurt me and Jim, are welcome. Uh, especially we like to speak to Syrians. We never spoke to the aliens from Syria and they are channeling through others so we invite them to channel through Jim as well. That's our invitation. Uh, we would be very happy to speak to the leader of the colonies, Nina, and anybody from the colonies to learn the news from the colonies. We also was said that there will be important announcements. We will be obviously very happy to hear any announcements. I will pause now and uh, lay down and Jim will channel. And happy holidays. The recording is started. When I need to get any personal information, um, we wouldn't stop it. I will just make a sign like that. So uh -huh. when I see I, it's easier for me to cut it out. Okay. All right. Alrighty then. <clears throat> now that the weather is in a little bit more of control, I can speak to you briefly. This do? Yes. Welcome. Thank you. You can speak on personal topics and public topics. I will cut away anything which is inappropriate. The weather has been a major issue lately, as you may know. 
the polar caps have shifted so it's very interesting the effects that it's having okay. although you are in a warming period it would appear that you're in a freezing period so opposites mm -hmm. are familiar to us in this pattern mm -hmm. I just had to let you know about that okay. that is my main dealings is the weather and the Seismic and the melting of the ice has been added to my roster of things to watch. So I have many questions, but go ahead. No, you, you may ask. Uh, are there any? Uh, I mean, regarding the ecology, how do you affect it? What is the mechanics? What is the technology we use to affect it? We use uh, seeding of the clouds, as you do as well. Uh -huh. Our seeding is a little different. It d uses different chemical formats that cause different outcomes than your seeding might have. Of course. Um, it actually curtails or limits the force that can be produced by any particular storm, even though some of them have still produced a great amount of energy, they are still being subdued by some of our techniques. Are you doing Reiki on Earth? Uh, are we doing Reiki? On Earth, yes. To the N planets. That would be similar it is an energy attachment yes but there are other chemicals and things involved actually technology as well so it would be not a true Reiki no Reiki would be pure energy uh, somebody asked about Fukushima uh, regarding this webinar uh, do you have any news about Fukushima how things are being done now right right there Fukushima? The status of the disaster. Ah, that is not my area. However, the status has been difficult there. They have had much problems. There is much disease coming from the unsanitary conditions. Uh, what was the cause, if it is appropriate to say? I do not know that cause. I believe it was natural, but we are not in effect of that weather over there. We just are in this sector. However, the news from there is that they had done some prior experimenting and nothing like that was expected. They Japanese? I would say no. Our people are... Ah. It was a fluke, as you would call it. What is a fluke? A fluke is uh, something unexpected. Ah. So we are talking about nuclear disaster, right? Yes. So the idea was that it was negative human military or something like that that caused the... Uh, the wave, the oceanic wave. It was not supposed to be that way. I mean, it wasn't human made? It was not supposed to be that way. It was not... Ex the experiment that, that was given in that area was not predicted to happen in the way that it did. Is it alien made? The experiment was alien-made, but the outcome was something different. So Fulford proposed, like, a year and a half, when it happened, Fulford said it was a punishment to Japanese government for not giving it to blackmail from MIC. Is that Fulford's idea of any value? We are not aware of such of an idea as that, no. Thank you. Okay, um, what are the news? You, you mentioned that there will be announcements and the news and big things happened. Um, do you know, do you, do you have any? 
announcements? There is one announcement. Okay. We have accepted another species into Grookrick Near. That is huge. Yes. The Light Federation is not part of Grookrick Near, but is an ally of the first degree. Perfect. The species that we have introduced into our friendship and alliance will be announced shortly, but I must tell you that it is a wonderful thing. There are now five species in Grookvicknir, making it one of the larger of the Federation alliances, or whatever you want to label them as. This species is large. Large? Population-wise. Population? Ah. Blues have trillions. <laughs> that is a large population, but they are neutral and do not become involved. Uh -huh. They are an ally in a second or third degree sense. Uh -huh. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, how many of these new species are already on the Earth Project? Thousands. Great. I really welcome that and them. Um, was the work on the Earth Project one of the reasons the, that, you know, how big uh, was the portion of that motivation to work on Earth Project to join Gorkvitnir? There was a large percentage there. However, there were other benefits to this species to join our alliance. Perfect. They will have better protection than they've had in the past. They are not well known as fighters. Ah. And there has been some dissidents within their ranks uh -huh. that must be dealt with. Perfect. Uh, sounds sounds great. It sounds like a good good progress you made. Um, what is new in the colonies, if anything? There is little news to report from the colonies. Nina has done a wonderful job of mm -hmm. keeping them moving smoothly. Is Nina coming through today? Nina will not be here today. Uh, we invited Syrian, positive Syrians. Do you have? Uh, do you know if they're coming today? I do not know. Okay. They may come on their own. We have little communication. Let's answer the questions of our web uh, supporters. So Julia Lulu asked about her visitor last few days. Do you know Julia? Yes. Is it a benevolent visitor? Should she allow that visitor? Yes. Any more information on that? It is a project that we are working on. Mm -hmm. These, this was not an interview, but it was an experiment to see how adaptable she would be to outer planetary involvement. Was she taken... Of planet? Not in physical form, no. Was she taken uh, in spiritual form? There was a few minutes that, yes, we had helped her leave her body. So it was astral travel? Yes. Excellent. W were you personally there? No, I was not. Was this Yael working on it? Yes, it was. Excellent. Were Pleiadians involved? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, she asked about her children down here. Are they hybrids? Yes. Um, what percentage of alien DNA do they have? It's not a great deal. It was at the beginning of a, a hybridization program that was quickly terminated due to other disasters in the galaxy and your planet. However, mm. 
five percent on the one child. Which one? The younger, older? The youngest, and the older is eight percent. Okay. Uh, what DNA is that? What species? That I cannot tell you at this time. Fine. Um, are they spiritually from other planets or from Earth? I did not understand the question. Um, the recent incarnations, were they on Earth or on other planets? Other planets. Can you divulge the planets? I must ask permission for that. Just okay. a moment. I can give you one. Yes. Elela Kimshet. Elela Kimshet? Elela Kimshet. Elela Kimshet? Yes. Hmm. I don't know anything about that. That's okay. So which one is that? Which one of the child's children? The youngest. All right. Same question about Julia. Is she hybrid? Yes. But her percentage is much higher. Which percent? She has 12. Excellent. And you don't say the race? I cannot at this time. Does she have children, uh, hybrid children up there? Not at this time. Was she physically abducted? There was a time when abduction was permitted, and yes, she was part of an abduction. How many times, roughly? I am not given that information. I am only given that she was abducted. Perfect. By the Greys? Yes. Yael? Yes. Thank you. Big news. Um, <clears throat> she received, after she applied to the colony, she received phone calls, just just empty phone calls, from which sounded like uh, the, uh, the numbers when she Googled sounded like they're from MIC. Ah. Was it uh, something she, would, she should worry about? Not at this time. <clears throat> is she protected in any way? Yes. Perfect. I guess that would be all for Julia. Uh, thank you very much. And I will pass her, her. She is very bright and happy and loving. And you can even. I never. never yes, yeah. her vibration is high. Her vibration is amazing. Yes. Uh, same questions about um, Edmund. His vibrations are lower and he has diabetes. I mean, vibrations, he's afraid. He's very bright, very knowledgeable, very committed, but he's afraid. So, and one of the problems is diabetes. Can you help him? What is his diabetes from and how he can help himself? Diabetes is a common earth problem, mm -hmm. disease. Mm -hmm. It can be helped with the dietary it can be also helped with Reiki and energy healing. There are ways to confound diabetes. Do you know Jim, this body has diabetes. Do you know Edmund? I know who Edmund is, yes. He asked about the implants. Are they negative? His implants are not negative. However, he has much fear. He must learn to overcome that, and that will also help all diseases in the body. I agree with you completely. Uh, what would you recommend for overcoming the fear? I would recommend meditation. He does meditate. Begin your meditation with a tetrahedron in the heart. Make it of light. Bring that light out from the center of the heart and let it engulf you as a protective energy. Can you do that, Edmund? I hope you can. He was happy to hear that Jesus was real. Yes. And he even <clears throat> mentioned stigmata in his palms. 
Yes. So he is a Buddhist, and Buddhism is big for him. Yes. Now, the fact that Jesus is real is kind of modifies his belief in a way. Yes. Can you comment on that? Yes, he is in flux right now. Let me speak to you and tell you that your fear is unbased. You may move forward at any time when you discard this fear. How to do this? You are asking how. The way to do this, can you feel this energy? Edmund, you've gotten into a habit of continuous worry. There are things that you worry about that you need not. I know that your children are a concern. However, you help them the best that you can, and you need not worry any further than that. You are a gentleman. of high character, but you do not believe that. Look at all the good that you have done. You see little, but there is much. Because who you are translates into who everyone around you is as well. And those people that can see your higher self and higher vibration are moved. It is not easy to calm yourself, I understand, and that your diabetes is a concern. But if you do the things that you should do for your body, this <laughs> will not shorten your life. You may have inconveniences and a diet that you're not all particularly happy with, but in the end result you will feel better and be happier. <coughs> I must go. Thank you very much for your visit. Much love to you. Blessings. Hello, Dakar. Greetings. You are being recorded on video, but if you want to say anything personal or secret, that's fine. I can delete it later. I am not concerned. Thank you. Welcome, I'm happy to have you visit. Thank you. Things have been irregularly busy. Mm -hmm. Your questions, I will continue from where these do left off. Excellent.
Mio. Continue. Oh. I guess uh, Edmund is asking that he's been abducted by MIC aliens. You know, the combined uh, force of MIC and aliens. And he refuses now. Is it right that he's been abducted? And is it right that he, they stopped abducting him? They have stopped. Is it because of his decision? Yes. He mm -hmm. has more energy and decision making in that process than he realizes. <clears throat> now he wants to visit his children and asks if it is possible. Not at this time. Are these children uh, with Gorkfitnir? One. Okay. And the other is not. And that is the reason for all the visitations. By negatives? Yes, but they will not bother him anymore. So the other children is with negatives? Unfortunately, yes. Oh. Is it an adult? Yes. Is he working for the negatives? He is not working. He is a captive. A captive. Oh, that's... Oh, okay. A captive. On Earth? No. Ah. What species cap captured him? I am not permitted to say. But I can tell you this. There are missions to rescue those. He is not alone. Oh. What can we do, or the colonists do, to uh, risk rescue those? Can we ask or negotiate some sort of... Yeah, it's hard to negotiate with uh, negatives, but we apply for... You know, can they pa transfer the captives to the colonies? It will be possible in the future. We apply for that. I think that would be, maybe they could create a new colony under Gorkfitnir, so we're applying and asking as mediating, we want the captives to be released to the colonies. I guess, or, you know, any other solution would be great, but we want them to be in good hands, in friendly hands, I would say. They want, we want them to be free, or more free. It will happen but not yet. <coughs> they will never release the captives to the colonies at this time. They would release them to one of their allies who is less terroristic. Yeah, we, we would welcome that as well. Uh, what is the practical reason for them to keep the children, or the hybrids? Experimentation, to find out what has been done to cause hybridization of such high levels. So they learn the hybridization techniques? They are learning hybridization techniques and physiology of earthlings that are hybrids. Are they doing it with the purpose to save their races or to take over the Earth? Their intentions are not clear. But we assume <clears throat> they are doing it for the continuation of their race. Are these reptilians? They are a reptilian species. Are they connected to Anunnaki? They are connected to Anunnaki in fibrous ways. Fibrous? Links. Uh-huh. Yes. Interesting. Are these reptilians in the solar system? Yes. 3D reptilians? Yes. Ah. Oh. 
thank you. That explains. So, Edmund, your son is adult captured by reptilians in the solar system. And those are collaborating with MIC, right? It would appear that that is true. His visitations were to check his DNA against theirs, to make sure that he, that he was the father. You know, to take the piece of DNA, you don't really need to take the whole person. Correct. They seem to have taken him many times, and it becomes reg became regular, like very often, maybe a few times a month. There was a reason, but we are not aware of what it was. <clears throat> His mental abilities were affected. I see. Do you have any more advice for his health? We will send someone to assist with his recovery. He is recovering from trauma. Perfect. So we need someone to become personally involved, personally responsible, personally driving the project of saving our hostages, our hybrid hostages from reptilians. Is there any person who is really working on that? There is a committee. Okay. It would be nice to hear from that committee and to become more involved with that committee. I think it's very important for hostages to be uh, at least transferred to less hostile environment. One moment. The committee is bartering for their safety. Very good. Not all materials asked for by the reptilians is able to be given. Oh, that's the usual thing, yes. But there are some allowances. Very good. And we <clears throat> will do what we can. There are other ways to initiate release. Excellent. I will switch to another question. Um, we have a new active enlightened human joined us in the call in the, in the website. Her name is Jessica and she's married to a Korean. She's very enlightened and she is very interested in Korean culture and Korean esoteric fate, esoteric role, esoteric mission. Uh, are you familiar with uh, Korean civilization, where from did it come, and uh, what are their uh, mi what is the mission of the Korean civilization on Earth? Why is it so split and so complicated?
they are from a warrior race. Which one? From the Orion area. Amazing. They are taught as youth to become warriors. Mm -hmm. And since they have been on Earth and have become human in their mm -hmm. social amenities, they still hold on to past life cultures. Mm -hmm. Some would prefer enlightenment. Others would prefer tradition. Mm -hmm. This is a cause of great tumultuous emotions within them. Mm -hmm. Their lack of forward thought sometimes it interferes with their judgment. <coughs> Sounds very right. I must go. Thank you very much for your visit. Much love to you. Blessings. Blessings. <sighs> hey, Jim. Hey. Oof. How about you lay down? Oh. Let me get a one, sip. Two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, five. Right. So we are recording again. And then it's an interesting thing about Reiki is when you receive Reiki, you've been healed. When you give Reiki, you are being healed as well, which is a surprise. Mm -hmm. It just the energy goes through. And again, the idea of blockages is very helpful. Mm -hmm. When you do give Reiki, your energy is also being cleared and the blockages are being removed. So... It just helps the flow of energy, flow of supernatural chi, prana, reiki energy. Mm. And usually when I put my hands on James' head, somebody comes through. I'll see who comes through. <coughs> you have called energy from the series. Welcome. So your energy from the series. Yes. Welcome. Uh, I'm really happy that you visited. Calm enlightenment is our goal for all of humanity. As you know. Excellent. We well, are mm -hmm. ready to help whenever you are ready to accept. 
Many of your people still doubt that we exist, that aliens, as they call them, are out here, but we want to help. I know that sometimes you think our messages are too soft, yes. but they are not. Let me tell you why. A soft touch is necessary for those humans that we are contacting. Those with hard exteriors, hard thought processes, need the soothing softness of our message. This will give them alternative thoughts, alternative thinking processes. They are subliminal and very powerful. This will help calm the struggles within them so that they may be able to realize who they really are. Does this make sense yes, to you? Yes, perfect so Thank you. So our messages are soft. We are not a harsh people. Uh -huh. Our messages are powerful, however. Mm -hmm. There is so much strength in the power of love, mm -hmm. hope, and positivity and light. Mm -hmm. Therefore, our message to you today is to surround yourself with the positive. Thank you. Do not be harsh. Harshness has no proper healing capacities. It has no communicative value to us. Okay. It only confuses the words that are being spoken. Mm -hmm. and makes them less. I'm so happy that you came through. You sound very good. Thank you. Uh, it uh, sounds like it's easy for you to go through. What's your name? Cynthia. 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 Do, can you say your planet or star? It is not necessary. All right. The names of all the planets are different in every language. For you to know the name of our planet will not help you find it. But is it one of three Sirius stars? Yes. Which one is that? <laughs> it does not matter. Okay. Their name for it is different than ours. That's fine. What is... Uh, are you human? Humanoid? Do you look like human? We are humanoid, yes. Uh-huh. A fourth-dimensional? There are those of us that are fourth-dimensional, yes. Oh, so some of those of your species are fifth and sixth? There are assorted dimensions within our species. Uh-huh. Yes. So you have hands and two eyes and you can walk? Yes. Can you fly? Well, I suppose that is the word. Or oh, glide? Yes, that could be a word as well. So yeah. just without any technology, you just can mentally can mm -hmm. glide over the surface? Yes, our mental capacities are such that we can move and in ways which we please, that pleases us. From my childhood I have dreams very often when I glide over the surface. It's always on earth, but I glide. For humans it's very unusual. And I say, hey people, I'm, I'm flying over you. See, mm -hmm. is it because I'm from Sirius? <laughs> you are not from Sirius. Thank you. But you have allies who are. Um, allies. 
So I was I read that you were involved, were involved in Atlantis and gave a lot of knowledge to Atlantean priests. Is it about right? We have always been friends of the Atlanteans. Uh-huh. Are, are you genetics? Are you our ancestors? We have some DNA left on Earth. Excellent. Do I have uh, your DNA? No. Ah. Yeah, Syrians were said to be in Africa, right? The black ones. Are you black? I am a darker color, but not black. Like... Coffee? Chocolate? Uh, chocolate. Hmm. Do you look pretty to humans? I imagine some will, some humans might find me attractive. Are you female? Yes. Hmm. Do you have families? Yes. Do you have children and yeah. families living with parents? In some situations, yes. So normally children what would not live with parents? They would live elsewhere. It depends on the, what the parents want for their children. Do you live uh, <clears throat> long lives, like hundreds of years? We live lives that are several centuries long. When you are born... Do we keep the memories from previous incarnations, or you start over? We start over, as you do. Oh. But we can recall our memories, our lives, just as you can, with the help of others. Uh, are you familiar with Jesus? Is Jesus one of your saints? Yes, but we do not call him Jesus. I, of course. Um, he is our mentor. Excellent. Um, is he telling parables as well in your culture? Parables. Stories? Stories, yes. Is he a good storyteller? Yes. Can you tell one of his stories? If I can recall. Please. Let me check with my systems. Yes. Ah. Yes. He was telling about the young boy who visited the cave. And the boy went into the cave deeper and deeper. And he knew he was not supposed to. He was told by his parents that this was a dangerous place. But yet he went in deeper. And as he went in, he saw many side caves and tunnels. And he started moving through them. And he got lost. And he couldn't find his way home out through the front of the cave. His parents became very concerned. But they loved the boy. So they went and they sat with the wise men of the city and asked them, please, would you come help us find our son? And the wise men of the city said, indeed, but was he just being disobedient? And they agreed that he was. But they went to help him anyway. Do you know why? Why? Because they all have children that they love, and they all have children that have disobeyed. Yes. So they took a team, and they went in, and they found the child, and brought him to his parents. And the parents were so relieved that they did not punish the child. And he became a leader of the city. Do you know why? Because 
he was lost and was helped, although he was disobedient, was forgiven. He was nurtured even though he was disobedient, and he grew up into the light. And this is one of the stories that he tells. It probably misses something in the translation, but I think the idea behind it is still satisfactory. All the stories of Jesus we know in translation, so it's not unusual. Um, do you have children? I have one child. Do you hug them? Yes. Does, did he grow up with you? Yes, it is a male child. So and he has been with me by my side for many years. Ah, was he disobedient? All children disobey. Ah. Are you telepathic? I can be, yes. Can you speak vocally? Well, yes. Can you sing? I can. Wow. So Syrians are not that much different from us. There are little differences in all species. Yeah, but you are close. Like yeah. Pleiadians, right? Pleiadians are close. Are you familiar with Pleiadians? Your friends, right? You had alliance. Yes, we are familiar with Pleiadians. How different are you from Pleiadians in physicals? They are taller. They are blue, green, sometimes gray. Uh -huh. We are not. We are brown and cream, and sometimes a little mauve. Biology-wise, physiology-wise, what makes you different? We are not as solid. Ah. Oh. Not as solid. So you can kind of diffuse into change we can, space? We can change space and sometimes even change appearance. Can you hug a human? I have never tried. But if you hug, would you be harmed? No. So your blood is red? No. Ah. Oh. What color is your blood, then? It's brown. Oh, that's pretty much red. So is it oxygen-based? Do you breathe oxygen? Yes. So you might survive on Earth if you were without mask? No, we still needing a breathing apparatus. But the pressure would be fine? Yes. And the gravity would be fine? Yes. Have, you, have your species visited Earth before? Recently? Not recently, many thousand years ago. Many thousands. Do we have a historical records? Was it uh, Egyptian pharaohs which were Syrians or there at that time? We were involved with the Egyptians. We do have some mixing with them. Uh, there were Jewish tribe, I forgot the name. Jewish tribe in Egypt, Jewish... Uh, Kings in Egypt before the Moses, be yes. before the Exodus. I forgot the name. Was it Syrians in any way or not? There were Syrians. We in, in Syria. What, what is uh, Syrians? What is uh, connected to Syria? Obviously, they were right. Yes. Hmm. But the the frescs the. Images are so human of Syria, uh, the the you know the culture of Syria and yes. Assyria, Babylonians. They have very human frescs. Yes. And Egyptians have very less less modern. They were very different. Yes. So you were connected to both cultures, right? Yes. Hmm. So what human race would be closest to yours? I would have to check that. Now or later? Well, the Atlanteans were their closest. Yeah, but we don't know who they were. Like, of recent races, would it be something in Africa? Jews? Arabs? 
Middle East tea? The Middle East. Would we have more of our DNA than any other? Near East? Like things around Israel? Mm, yes. More Jordan area. Uh-huh. Jordan. How about the Iranians? Are they close to to you? We have been there. I know where that is. How about the Armenians? Are Armenians carrying a lot of Syrian DNA? Yes. Excellent. Are you connected to Aryans? Which ones? Aryans? Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Nordics? Orions? The Pleiadians. I'm closer to this, right? Yes. We know of Grokrofik near. Uh-huh. We know that they are growing. Excellent. Are your people in solar system? <clears throat> Our people are not. I see. What makes you proud? That we can help humanity. Thank you. That it was once something that you could relate to. Yes. We are proud of who we are as a species. Uh-huh. We are proud of love that we give to other species as well. And guidance. We are sometimes tutorial to other species that yes. are that are learning how to survive and not as advanced as others. How do you call God? <clears throat> I did not understand that. Do you call the God all that is, or what's your name for the God? Do you want it in English? Yeah, just the translation. How do you refer to God? He who is. He who is. Would it be no male, no female, just it? What is? Yes, he is many. Uh huh. We share that with many, many species. Can you translate one of your prayers or blessings? A prayer to the Most High? Yes. <sighs> or maybe you can first say it in your language and then translate it, if, if you may. Well, I can translate uh, either way. What would you like? First, say in your language and then translate if you may. Fences. Kuchisiste. Hoshmi. Yilvata. Fofmi. Simste. Kemkelikia. Mm. Dieteratia. Mm. Pokhstiatin. Jinjio. Kurtibla. But <laughs> most holy one of light, love, and understanding, we bow down to you and ask that you give us your favor, that we may glow with love as you do, that we may understand the light in which you come to us in. Prepare us for a way of love. Prepare us in our affections for one another. Care for us like none other. We love you and we give you ourselves as an offering. Praise and alleluia. Amen. Is it Jim now? Yes. Hey, Jim. It was a nice visit. We had a, a Syrian visiting. Very nice and light and love. Mm, yeah. I missed the. I have to come in for just one minute. Oh, like a long time, no here. Nice to have you around. Oh, you had so many questions. I had to come. So, when I was a child, I had the same nightmare. Was it a visit? 
Yes. From the blues. It was some something similar to what you just experienced. Not quite the same. Mm -hmm. um, we would not frighten you like that. Mm -hmm. We would try not to. Um, but uh, from what I understand, you were frightened as a child. I was. I'm surprised that they did not realize that. Mm -hmm. So who was coming through? Uh, that was uh, someone that I know. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, it because the, all the experiments with Earth are somebody that I know because we are in a special group of people that only we can visit in that way. So. So you're older than I, and you were adult when I was visited. In yes, the yes, but we did not mean to frighten you, but I, I see that we have. Can I speak to that person eventually? Uh, perhaps. Yeah. I know who that is, yes. Was it a blue? Yes, it was. Oh, so blues were visiting me when I was a child. Yes, it was an experiment, just like the experiment that I just told you about. The experiment that we were just doing, that I had to observe, see, I was only observing because I could, if I was to be a part of it, I would not have the right uh, angle of understanding. All right. Um, but I was watching as they were connecting with you. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. What are you looking at? If I'm being recorded, yes, oh, okay. I am. Okay. Oh, I was thinking maybe something outside. No, I was just looking at the camera. Oh, okay. But the, we were uh, judging how um, easy it would be for us to become a part of you like we are with Jim. So like I easy, am. Right? It wasn't that hard, no. But we did not get into your head. Why not? I don't know. We couldn't get there. So I'm inviting you more of that experiments because it connects me more to we didn't get fourth into the dimension. Right, we didn't get into the head or the neck. Uh -huh. But we did get the hands. We did feel some parts of the other parts of the body. We did not feel the head. Uh, for me it was a positive experience and writing lots more of that. Good. Because I think for me it's... Uh, you are healthy enlightened and yes. and you are wanting to so badly go into space that um, we're trying to help them with their experimentation mm -hmm. and give them a little feedback because yeah, they're so, so um, but they have their reasons for what they do you know these dudes can be very secretive so so Visit more? Why don't you visit me? Can you visit me? I can, yes. Come, come over. Um, the, the reason I did not visit you is because I was observing I the visitation. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yes. yes. I had to observe it in uh, several different angles. So. Uh, is it important for you to visit me when I am laying down and immobile, immobile or you can visit me anytime? Um, it is best when you're immobilized, yes. If I stand like that, can you visit me now? Um, no. It's best when you're more relaxed. Oh, if I stand like that? <laughs> <laughs> if you were laying down, perhaps, it would be easier. But, there, it's not to be happen again for a little while. Visit me in the shower, that's a very relaxed state. Oh yes, that would be a relaxed state. So. Excellent. Any more comments on questions of today? No, but I have to go. I have classes, so classes. I have to go. I have to yeah, go. Yeah, do you study DNA? I have, yes. But I am not allowed to share that information with you. At least you understand my question now. Yes. So, do you have the frequencies of light which would activate a DNA, a piece of sequence of DNA? I have some... I have some codes and sequences that would be very interesting to you. Let's put it that way. Did, did, you, did you try to experiment with those? Did I what? Did you try to experiment with those? No, I did not. Order that experiment. You don't even have to do it with your hands. Just order it. Right. Your lab can take your sequence, your frequency mm -hmm. of DNA, uh, your frequency of light, or the code mm -hmm. of light, mm -hmm. have it DNA put in a living organism or the cell and mm -hmm. then activate it and see if it works and then 
you will get the answer. Yes. Do that experiment in you know in your cells, whatever blue cells in the lab, and, mm -hmm. uh, and see how it works. And I'm sure that is part going to be part of the class. Yes. So. It will be very interesting what you learn. Okay. And then we can do that in parallel here. And well, see what I happens. hate to rush off, but I do have to go. Thank you very much. Have fun in your class. All right. Thank you. Much love to you. Bye-bye. Mm, Bye-bye. <laughs> ah, thank you. That was fun. Mm, I rich. learned a lot. I learned that I was visited by blues when I was a child. How about that? That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't. So, thank you for watching. Um, you watched uh, a channel discussion of four or of our extraterrestrial friends. First was this do. This do is a yellow gray. The yellow grays are descend descendants of Earth humans and of Zeta gray. They're hybrids and they also contributed to our genome in ancient times. They, because they are descendants, they were elected by other aliens to be the first to do the first official, uh, the first to do the first official open contact with the Earth. And this do is one of the leaders planning this contact and we are lucky to be in contact with, the, with him and that he listens to our suggestions. The second was Takur, uh, she is an administrator at Human Colonies. She is a Liran, and Lirans are uh, an ancient, very proud race of uh, feline humanoids. Um, so Human Colonies, as I said, uh, host about 100 people, and the people cycle up and down. Total, there was about 200 people in about half a year. Uh, you can apply for a visit to a colony through our website, uh, humancolony.org. Um, unfortunately, only about 1% of applic applicants uh, are lucky to be selected to go up there. But still, we are welcome. More applications we need. We need you. We need bright, talented, devoted, and uh, people with abilities for telepathy and other special abilities. Um, I haven't been to the colonies. I'm one of the first to apply, and I hope to get there some someday. <coughs> and next was um, Cynthia, uh, a Syrian uh, from a serious triple star. I think it's triple star. And we were lucky to meet her today. And it was, I think, an incredible beginning. We hope to speak to Syrians again. And Syrians, you are invited to speak more to us. We love you. And next was our old friend Lakesh, a blue Pleiadian, um, and we talked to him since the very beginning, and uh, we like him very much. Um, that is a little summary. Um, we are looking for speaking engagements. We are located in Rochester. Jim and I are located in Rochester, upstate New York. We are very close to Toronto, and we can drive to Ottawa, Philadelphia, New Jersey. So we are looking for ways we can s design a, a seminar or a two-day school and we can talk about topics which, we, which you know we are talking about, the aliens, the spirituality, the ascension, the fourth density, the fourth dimension, uh, and Reiki healing, and all other sorts of healing, energy healing. Mm. We also can fly, so we think like if we go to Sedona, it would be about $350 per ticket. So if we can assemble a group of 25 people for two days and they each pays about $30, that would cover at least the flight. So, so it's all possible, and we're looking for ways to do that. Um, Jim is available for personal channeling sessions through Skype or video Skype, audio or video Skype. He charges half for half an hour. He charges forty dollars, and he doesn't charge you for just speaking. He only only the channeling is a, is a difficult part. So contact him through our website and set up the Skype video session, uh, Skype channeling sessions. And we invite your donations. We gl gladly accept donations through our website. You can donate uh, through PayPal. 
and so far we received 200 dollars of donations and thank you very much for the donations they make these videos possible and Jim got a hundred I got a hundred and it gives us additional motivation to do those not motivation additional excuse to do those videos which I think are very important that's what we think is important to do right now so join our co our humancolony.org website take part in our discussion live long and prosper and have a good day